Okay, so welcome back to this video. Here, we're going to deploy a learning management system on a Docker environment. When it comes to using Docker and Kubernetes, you need to decide where you would like to run the infrastructure. For testing or non-production workloads, you can do that in your laptop. But for production cases, you can either use a cloud like AWS or you can manage your own cluster in your own private data center. For the public cloud, you also have the option to either create your own cluster on AWS or use a managed service like EKS, Elastic Kubernetes Service, on the AWS cloud. For these exercises, I will use a cluster that I created in my local server. I have a two-node cluster running Kubernetes, the master node and the worker node. Both nodes have Docker installed, so for hosting the application on Docker, I will use the master node. Why for the Kubernetes, I will use the whole cluster. Okay, so here are the steps that I'm going to follow to deploy this application. Step zero, we need to install Docker. In my own case, I already have Docker installed. Step one, I'm going to create an image with my LMS. And then step two, I will upload it to the Docker registry. And then step three, I will create a website on Docker and step four, we will access the website. And after that, we'll be done with this video. So let me take you to my cluster and get started. So here is my shell. And I already logged on to this server. If I exit, now I'm back to my laptop. But I can SSH to this server and I'll type in my password And this is the server that I'm going to use for this exercise. So like I said earlier, I have Kubernetes and Docker deployed here. So if I say kubectl get nodes, kubectl is a command you use with Kubernetes. If I say get nodes, it's showing me that I have actually two nodes. One, the master node, the other one, the worker node. Again, like I said, each one of them has Docker installed. But I'm going to do the exercises for Docker on the master node. And I'll do the exercises for Kubernetes on both of them. Okay, so let's get started. If we come back here, step one is to install Docker. But like I said, Docker is already installed. How do I know? If I do Docker PS, I see that there are a lot of containers that are already running. If you type Docker, this shows that Docker is installed because it's not complaining. You see, it's showing you how to use Docker. I type Docker and it gave me all these options here. So Docker is already pre-installed. So step zero is a tick. Step one, create image. Okay. For us to create an image, in Docker, we need to create a file called Docker file. So let me show you that file here. This is the file we need to use. This file has to be exactly the way it is spelled here with a capital D. So let me show you this file. Open Docker file. This is a very simple file. Basically, it's saying that we're going to obtain the base image called HTTPD 2.4. And then we're going to copy our website into that image. Take note of this location here. This is where Apache serves the pages from in a containerized environment. If you remember, when we did the previous video, we had to copy the files to slash var slash www slash HTML. But in a containerized environment, this is the location that Apache serves the websites from. So this file is very simple for this um, particular exercise. But this file can be very complex depending on what you're trying to do. In any case, once we have this file ready, we can now create our image. But first of all, how do we get the application that we're going to deploy? Well, if you look here, I actually have the directory already here. What I did was I cloned that repository from 
my GitHub account. So this is my GitHub account. All I did was I copy this, then I come here and I say git clone. And then I clone Educat, but it's already cloned. So I don't have to do that two times. Okay, so now we're going to build our image. But before we build the image, let's understand something with Docker. Docker has three main steps. Step one is to build the image. Step two is to upload that image to a Docker registry. And then step three is to run your container. Again, build your image, ship it to a registry like Docker Hub, then three, run your application. The third step, run your application, is what we're going to do when we use Kubernetes. So the first step to build the syntax is like this. Docker build minus T. I'm going to put igbdio and put the name of the image. Make sure you put that dot. So it has to be exactly like I type it here. I'm using the Docker command. I'm using build as an option to build my image. Then I'm using slash T to tag or to name the image. And I have to put my username, my username on Docker Hub. If I take you to Docker Hub here, you can also create an account here. Anybody can create an account on this uh, Docker Hub. Uh, my username is Igbedio. And so all my images are here. All right. I will show you later when I push this image. So I put my name and I put the name that I want to give to the image and I put a dot. Dot means pick the Docker file from here. Then I press enter. Okay. So this is quite fast. That is probably because I have run this image before, but at least it's working. I have the image there. Let's check for this image. To do that, you type Docker images. I'm going to go and grab Okay, so now I have my image, which I just created. So now that I have my image, the next thing is to push it to the registry. Remember, first step is Docker build, second is Docker push, then third is to run the container from the image. You run the container from the image, just like you create your EC2 from an AMI in AWS. So let's do that. To push my image to Docker registry, I have to first of all log in. To log in, I have to type docker login. And it said login succeeded because I had put my credentials before. Since it's my laptop, I already configured my credentials. So now after that, I can do docker push, give it the image name. Docker push, Igbedo educat. And is now pushing that image to Docker registry. Okay, very good. So once it finishes, if I come here and I refresh, I should see Educat. That's it. You see, that's the one we just uploaded. So now that I have this image pushed, we are doing very well. So let's see. Create the image, upload the image to Docker registry, create the website. Okay, so now I need to run the Docker command to run this application inside my container. To do that, I type docker run minus D says demonize it. I want to give it a name. I can say educat. I can give it any name I want. And I say minus P AD 80. Now the first 80 here is the port that I will access this application on my laptop. The second 80 is the port that this application is running inside the container. So I will run this application in my container, but I can access it on my host. Wherever Docker container is running, I can use the IP of that host to access this container or this application. And this first 80 indicate my host, and the second here indicate the port where this application is running. Then I need to give it the image. 
And remember, the image is Igbedo Educat. Again, right from here, we can see that this is the image I'm going to use. So you need to specify it exactly the way it is. So let's press Enter. And the container is running here. So now I have my application running. I can do Docker PS. Let me go grab Educate. And I have it here running. So see what it's saying here, port 80 to port 80. So how do I access this application? Again, if I know the IP of this host, um, if I know the IP of this host, I can use it to access this application. So to do that, I need to know the IP of this host. I know the IP, but let me show you. Get notes minus O wide. So basically, that's the Kubernetes command to get the number of hosts and the IP addresses. So for this node, I'm using this IP here. So I'm going to copy that. I'm going to come here and create a tab. And remember, it's port 80. So I don't need to put a port. But if I want, I can put it. It's just redundant. Look at that. So our educate application is now running inside the container, inside the Docker container. But I can access it with the IP address of my server where Docker is running because I forwarded a port. I forwarded a port here from port 80 to port 80 on my laptop. Okay, so now I can access this application which I just deployed. And that is what is running right here. So step one or at least the first part of this uh, training is over. We've been able to, Docker was installed. We created an image. We uploaded it, the image to Docker registry. We created a website and we accessed the website. Now let me tear down this container and check if my website is actually up, up and running. So Docker PS to grab Educat. And then I'm going to say docker remove. Okay, let me stop it. Docker stop and give it this name, this ID. Okay, the container has been stopped. So now if I try to access this website again, let's see what happens. So it's no longer working. That will no longer work because I stopped the container. Now if I come back again and I start it, let's go back and try again. See, the website is back. So you see that we are now able to run our website inside the container using Docker. Very good. So now let's go to the next video where I'm going to run this same application using Kubernetes. So I hope to see you in the next video.